Hi, my name is Andy Mills. I'm going to be walking you through a demonstration of how Fuse Drive Workstation works with the Intel NVMe 750 series SSD along with uh, several other hard drive and SSD combinations. The system we're going to be using today is a standard white box system using a Gigabyte motherboard, a Z97 class from Intel uh, with a Core i7 uh, shown here with 24 gigs of RAM. Uh, on the storage side, more importantly, we're going to be using two fuse drives, one for boot drive and one as a data drive. Uh, the boot drive is a Samsung Toshiba combination hard drive SSD and the data drive is an NVMe SSD uh, and Seagate 6 terabyte drive combination for mainly capacity and, uh, and high performance for, you know, because we're going to be doing some videos, uh, demonstrations here. Uh, inside the box, you can see here just a quick snapshot of the 750 series uh, slotted in next to the uh, uh, the VGA card here, as uh, the uh, GTX card here from EVGA, and uh, the bottom card there just happens to be a uh, Blackmagic uh, uh, 2K capture card or 1K capture card. Sorry. Uh, finally, the videos we're going to be using are referenced here, uh, and we just uh, obtain those off the web. But we do encourage you, of course, to always use uh, live uh, customer. Uh, video if at all possible. These uh, were the ones we found which seem to have uh, the highest uh, qualities in terms of uh, 4K, the closest to 4K it's YUV420 and uh, secondly they each uh, sustain anywhere between 150 to 200 megabytes per stream which makes them very difficult to operate off a single hard drive so they're very good for demonstration purposes. With that let's switch to the live demo. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is uh, take a look at which disk drives are actually showing in the system so we can get an idea of what their index names are. In this setup, the NVMe drive from Intel is uh, coming in at drive 0, and we have our disk drive uh, from Seagate showing up as drive 1, and that's our 6 terabyte drive. We're going to be using <coughs> excuse me, these two in a tiered volume. This we're not going to use today. And the other two, as we'll see in a second, are actually the other boot fuse drive um, that uh, is already pre-existing and set up in this, uh, this system. Workstation Pro does allow you to set up a bootable fuse drive also. So with that, let me kick off the configuration utility. Uh, this is eConfig. I'm going to keep this open to one side. Uh, eConfig can be found under the Modus uh, directory, uh, and uh, you just launch it. And then in this particular case, out of all the options, you'll see we're going to create a data drive. Uh, the first device in our data drive, uh, fused data drive, is going to be the Intel. And the second, which is the slow uh, drive for our particular case here, is going to uh, be the, um, the Seagate drive, or one of the Seagate drives. So I press create. And uh, as we watch this disk management system on the left here, you can see as they are taken offline, and a new drive, a new virtual disk is created. That's a very important difference between the Emotus software and caching software, for example. A new virtual disk is created. Now, for setting up our demo, um, we're going to be walking through the next steps and showing how you can set up a easily demonstrable system. At this point, most users would simply format that disk and get on with life. So let's uh, switch over now to the next step, which is uh, getting your demo ready for uh, uh, set up and ready for demonstration. Okay, so now we've set up our fuse drive here. You can do a quick sanity check, make sure it does say indeed in Modus T01 fuse drive. Uh, and a very important utility we're going to use to help explain what we're doing here is called eLive. That's another one of the utilities that's uh, uh, both uh, very useful from a user and a uh, uh, demonstration perspective. Um, I'm showing it defaults to the first fuse drive it sees, which is our boot one here. So let's first and foremost switch over to our second one. And you can see what we've created here is a uh, uh, a, an initial map as it were. So let me explain what we have uh, as it's a very important component of our demo, demo here. Uh, if I want to equate this to what uh, we're seeing in the um, disk manager we can do a little trick here and that trick is basically to uh, line up this baseline here, uh, this, let's see, this uh, map here sorry, that we're showing with the, the disk at the bottom. So now I've overlaid those two what you're seeing is this disk drive here uh, equating to the the uh, the map that we show in eLive. Uh, 
So from zero uh, gigabytes all the way up to 5.9 terabytes or say roughly six terabytes here, uh, we see how that entire raw disk drive space is mapped. Now we're going to do for the demo is we're going to actually create and initialize a disk uh, drive that actually is split into two. And the reason we're going to do that is because we want to create two regions of the disk drive. One that's definitely operating in this area here and then another for demonstration purposes operating in uh, maybe up here where it's completely hard drive. So you got SSD hard drive mapped down to these areas here. And the simplest way to do that is to create a volume that is uh, half the size of whatever your demonstration volume is. In other words, split the disk drive into two. So we got our fuse drive one, which creates one uh, in the first region, as it were, um, and then we create a second uh, disk drive here. Let's do that again in the rest or remainder. Now what this helps in demonstration, even though a user may not split it this way, what it helps us do from a demonstration standpoint is to clearly show how the two parts of the disk drive uh, operate differently. Um, and uh, it, it allows us to put files in the two different areas. So I'm going to go ahead and copy some uh, high resolution 7, 4 gigabyte level files that we downloaded um, uh, from the ones we mentioned earlier and that's going to take about 10 minutes so we're going to pause here and come back uh, once that has completed. So in this next step you can see we've already copied our files across. Fuse 1 if you recall has all the uh, data sitting on the first partition and given the size and amount of data here being less than the size of the SSD pretty much every one of these are on the fast here and you can quickly do that by doing a right click on each one of the files and you'll see at the bottom here uh, it will indicate the level of tiered, uh, tiering sorry, uh, for each of the files. And so every one of those that we copied across um, is pretty much tiered up. Now if you look at the bottom one, that's sitting on pretty much the, a slow tier or dramatically uh, untiered. 1% uh, usually indicates maybe one or two pages have uh, certainly been promoted, usually as part of the copy process. But don't worry about that, it's substantially untiered. So the first part of the demonstration uh, we previously installed the, the YUV player on here, so we're going to create um, all the files that we have on the slow tier now. We, we, we're going to create a little matrix here of the files um, playing off uh, the hard drive portion of the tier. And quickly you put all those together and you can see uh, quite clearly that there are already issues with the with the files playing. You can see how very slow these guys are here. And you know a couple of useful tools um, to to have uh, or that we use at this point is uh, one being the uh, eLive monitor again. I'm going to bring that up so you can actually see what's going on. Uh, and just basically let's make a bit more room on the screen here. Let's collapse these back down. So again, we're playing off the slow tier right now. And a useful thing to do at this point is switch across eLive into the activity view. The activity view is useful for showing exactly which tier you're, you're operating off. So two things there, switch to megabytes because this is obviously more of a megabytes class demonstration than IOs. And usually switch to 10, maybe 30 minutes. So let's leave that on 10 for now. And you can see from this pretty clearly these these videos here which are somewhat struggling through their first cycle and bear in mind this RAM cache here uh, you'll probably see them speed up but certainly from off the shoot these guys are operating and struggling to, to operate that's because they're capped at 100 megabytes per second remember each one of these streams are capable of 200 now to show this in parallel I'm now going to show what happens when you run this off the fast portion. I remember the, the, uh, the guys that are sitting in the fast portion of the tier are going to be operating much quicker. So first of all, let's bring up our clown, uh, bring him up there, put him next to him up the top and press play. We're going to do the same for our, our snake and press play here. And you can see that pretty quickly you get a nice visual uh, for people to see exactly how the uh, the tiers are operating same volume same disk volume um, but obviously now these guys are operating at the speed they're supposed to be operating at and 
almost immediately you can see from our you know our monitor our eLive monitor that the data rates now jumping up uh, we're now hitting uh, data rates of close to 700 megabytes peak and probably going to settle out at something slightly less than that um, and again clearly these guys are you know are struggling now what's going to happen is we're in a, a tiered mode today um, where we're set to be automatic some guys prefer to turn that off and use pure manual pinning we can uh, as you may have uh, seen earlier we can go to those slower files and start saying okay I want you guys up on the fast here uh, and you can do that by literally picking out the file as you can see as I'm doing here and say promote and you can have that promote for a period of time where it's tracked um, or you can have it do it forever and uh, you can manually push files up that way but in this case it's sometimes easier especially at show demos where you're running for large periods of time to let them just free run like this and these will eventually pick up they will take a long time though so what we're going to do to kind of speed that up a little bit because you've got a you know 11 gigabytes of data or so or sorry 18 i guess all together here roughly that needs to be tiered up that can't happen instantaneously so we're now currently operating off both parts of the tier let's go back to the region view and uh, we'll, uh, we'll show you what happens you know, as you start to uh, speed things up a little bit. So let's take a pause here so uh, you can get a, you know, get a good feel for what we're currently showing, fast versus slow tier. Okay, so the next step, we're now going to stop these videos for a second because what happens with tiering is we always give priority to the active data. Um, and that's because we, we really don't want to impact the application. Uh, you know, even forcefully promoting stuff can, can obviously result uh, in the system being, uh, you know, somewhat dragged down. So that's one of the trade-offs with a hybrid system. Um, but, uh, of course, I think uh, we all get the benefit of the cost and, and performance trade-offs here. So essentially what you see almost immediately happen once I stop all these videos, it frees up a bit of, gives a bit of breathing room to the engine to start to go off and figure out which parts I need to promote. And remember all these are already on the fast tier. These are not. So what it's figured out almost immediately is that light blue area is where all that activity has been detected and it said I need to re you know, move sections of the SSD that's not being used from over here onto you know underneath these files here so that these guys can operate at the full tiered rate now that can take uh, a fair amount of time depending on how you know how fast uh, or how much data you're, you're using I've got like I said 18 gigabytes per second uh, getting 18 gigabytes sorry um, so there is going to be a period uh, of time here where the where the files will have to uh, promote up now for show demos um, you know obviously sometimes it, it's advantageous to drop the number of files down but the effect of showing multiple streams of course offsets uh, that that benefit so I'm going to pause again once again here let this thing tear up uh, and then we're going to show what happens of course once we're we're fully tiered on uh, all these uh, uh, these different files okay so uh, we're back uh, we've now reached the point where this uh, central piece has uh, fully promoted uh, if we go and look at these files, we see they're now showing 100% tiered. Uh, previously, they were sitting at around 1%, and uh, clearly those guys have, have promoted up automatically. Remember, these guys here, we never played, so the last three, which are just simple clones of those two there, are still sitting down on the slow tier. So it's figured out we played those, those three there. Now let's fire them off again. Let's see what kind of uh, performance we get now. And, you know, as, as we bring the thing back up, you can almost see immediately those files, which never moved um, off, you know, their, their relative position on the F uh, fuse drive, um, F drive or E drive, um, you know, they're, they're now clearly operating uh, at a much better performance level. Now, it's, there's a good chance we're actually now hitting uh, the upper range of the, you know, what we can get through this tier. And you can see almost immediately Let's go back and show this over a longer period of time to, to capture the full hour and the, the amount of time we took to kind of copy that up there. But you'll see now we're operating pretty much at the, at the peak performance of the, uh, of the fuse drive. So to recap, um, we've set up a fuse drive, a data fuse drive, and uh, we split it into two partitions. Uh, the reason so we could create an easy island of fast and slow storage, which looks something like this. Uh, and we put them on two different partitions and we copied a bunch of files over 
and then we essentially went off and showed them side by side uh, showing a, a slow and fast and there's various combinations uh, that you can experiment with on this um, but uh, this is probably uh, the most useful way to show the, the fast slow portion and then we let it either tear up naturally or we can pause videos and move them up and down uh, you know, per, per the customer just to, to show them the effect of, of the tiering model.